A friend said to me, if you want to create video games, how about you try to recreate Tetris? And my initial reaction was, I'm not really interested in making Tetris. I want to make some sort of platforming game or something that I actually have an interest in making. It's very easy for someone to say, if you want to learn how to make a game, how about you try to recreate Tetris? What they don't think about though, is that Tetris is very programmer heavy and it requires you to sort of have a lot of like detection in, in terms of like, okay, how many blocks are in this line? in order to this line, for this line to disappear. How does it disappear? How do you create a tetramino, meaning a piece composed out of four cubes? And stuff like that. But then something happened in my brain where those two ideas sort of fused. And uh, my idea now is to try to make some sort of Tetris game that involves some sort of platforming mechanic. I feel like that could be a good thing for me to learn the tools that I'm working with and to learn uh, you know, how to logically piece such a thing together. So in trying to find more tutorials on how to do Tetris in the Unreal Engine, I found that someone had actually done that and then uploaded their entire project. So here's the actual project and here's what, it's lo what it looks like. I mean, of course, I wish that I could make something as good as this. Uh, let's see, yeah, these are the controls, there we go. Uh, the scores, however, do not seem to work at the moment, but that might also be because I've screwed something up. Anyway, that is Riftress. And um, when I first opened this project and looked at the blueprints, it was, uh, well, it was overwhelming, to say the least, because this is what it looks like. This is most, if not all, no, it's not all, but it's most of the code that makes this little Tetris thing work. And I've spent probably about two weeks now trying to sort of figure out what all of this means. I had thought that in order to learn how to use this tool, I would have to look for very basic and very specific tutorials, like a simple 2D platformer or a simple Tetris game to gain specific knowledge. Because uh, the platforming tutorial gave me some of the basics. It gave me sort of like, okay, I know what events are. These are events. When someone presses the button to move left, this event gets triggered. And then there's a lot of uh, conditions and stuff to make things happen. I knew that much, but there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to figure out from just looking at this. As it turns out, the best basic tutorials I could find was actually at the source. The wonderful people at Epic Games who have created the Unreal Engine have also created a bunch of helpful video tutorials. And actually the most helpful tutorial I could find that was directly linked to my idea of making sort of a side-scrolling Tetris uh, game was um, an infinite runner tutorial that they have made. And like, seriously, how to make an infinite runner game, it's right there. They told you. It's it's really basic. Uh, but of course, it, it's really basic for those who know how to use the tools. And as of yet, I must admit, I don't really know how to use the tools. So my approach now with Riftress is to try to recreate it as best I can, but utilizing some of those Paper 2D elements that I have before. So while, whereas Riftress uh, works in three dimensions, I mean, well, my game that I have so far called Tetra Jump does, um, I mean, it is in three dimensional space. I mean, you, you, you can see the plane here, uh, but it utilizes the Paper 2D um, tile map and stuff like that. And it has an autographic camera. So if I hit play now, everything's gonna be completely flat. And of course, you can also see that it, it doesn't at all work because I haven't really figured out how to spawn blocks yet. Uh, I have been able to like create an array of blocks because if you remember from the, the previous episode, I have this single piece that, let's see, this is uh, my block. I have this single piece, um, the moves, here we go. At event tick, that means every frame of the game, unless it has stopped, it keeps moving in the uh, forward direction at a scale of one. And this is the capsule component, which is the character, uh, well, it is the hitbox basically, or whatever moves the character around. 
I'm not really explaining it well still because I lack sort of the vocabulary to, uh, to explain it properly. And this is my level blueprint at the moment. I'm trying to, I'm experimenting a little bit with materials and colors and I'm trying to spawn all the blocks at the spawn point so that I've, I've added in a specific reference in this world and I refer to this actor, it's called an actor, um, instead of referring to a fixed, um, you know, X, Y, Z variable. So I can move this around and it'll spawn in a different space. I mean, that's quite nifty. That was an idea that I had on my own. Isn't that clever? Uh, yeah, if I move it back there, it's gonna do like that. Um, now my problem is, of course, that I, I'm following a tutorial that isn't basing the core mechanics on gravity and moving uh, horizontally. Because Riftress moves top down and it moves at a, uh, you know, it, it, it waits, it pauses and then it moves everything down and then it pauses and then it moves everything down. But there's a lot of strange things. It, he constantly checks whether the menu is active. Which I guess makes sense for him because that if the menu is active, that means a game is not running. Um, but he also has a lot of variables for whether the game is running or not. So it's, um, yeah, it's a little bit confusing. Um, I, I am determined, however, to finish the uh, platforming Tetris game. But I know that the way forward is going to be, uh, yeah, we're back to that whole steep learning curve argument again. And uh, I'm a bit unsure, well, how steep it actually is. Once again, there's a lot of stuff that I have yet to understand and there's a lot of stuff that I could, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I can just picture in my brain how it would work, but I don't have the basic concept of how to, to perform it in the blueprint. Um, which functions to use and how to use them and how to get certain properties and how to manipulate them. And it's frustrating, of course, but it's also really fun. I mean, this is my crossword puzzle of the uh, semester, trimester, de decade, probably. I hope it'll still be this fun because this is fun, discovering new things and trying to figure things out. It's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. So yeah, I hope you got something out of that and uh, I'll just see how this looks next week.